So we have our problem here. We have an object on a ramp. Uh, I'm going to do this with just variables today. Um, again, I want you to get used to this process. So for example, I might ask you to derive the equation for acceleration. In other words, what is the acceleration? How fast is it the object accelerating down the ramp? And when you do do it with numbers, how will you know that you did it right? Or what's a good indicator that you did it right? What should the acceleration be? Less than 9.8, right? It should be at a smaller rate. OK, what's the first step? What's always our first step? Do our free body diagram. So that'll be our first step, is to go ahead and draw our free body. OK, so do we still have gravity? Yeah. Yep. What direction is gravity? Down. How down? Straight down Straight or down. down the ramp? Straight down. Straight down. Good. So our acceleration of gravity is going to be straight down. You can call this FG. You could call this um, weight. You could call this MG. Because remember, FG is equal to MG. Yes? Um, would you like, consider this problem the same as falling at an angle? Or um, <coughs> like vectors and stuff? So like, does the actual score have any impact? It does. Yeah, it definitely does. So if it was just straight down, what would be the acceleration? 9.8. And so we're going to see, as you visualized, it's definitely less than 9.8. So we're going to take that into account. Does gravity exert the same force on everything? Or is it just the same acceleration? Uh, that's a good question. Does gravity ex exert the same force on everything? No. Or is it just the acceleration? Just the acceleration. Just the acceleration. And how do we know? What is the force of gravity equal to? the mass times gravity. So if the mass were to double, what would happen to the force of gravity? It would also double. Um, all right, any other forces acting on this? Normal force. Now what direction is the normal force? Is it also straight up? Perpendicular. Remember the word normal, that's what it means. Perpendicular. So as you rotate the axis, I mean, as you uh, rotate our plane, if we were to change the angle of our plane, the normal force would also change. So if you're straight up and down, it'd be straight up and down. At this point, it's going to be perpendicular. Anything else? Friction. Now what direction is friction? So friction would be this way. So if the object sliding down the ramp is I've posed to you, then friction would be opposite of the motion. It's always opposite of the motion. If the motion's this way, it would be this way. Okay, what step? What's the next step? Set up your summations. Okay, now we do have an issue here because this is supposed to be summation in x and summation in y. Well, what's our issue? Gravity. How many forces do we have that are pure x or pure y? Mm -hmm. One. Okay, and so we actually have two forces that are not. So one of the things you could do would be to go ahead and fix these two forces, fix the normal force and fix the frictional force so that they are in the x direction and y direction. However, we're going to do something else. What we're going to do is we're going to actually rotate our axis. So initially, this is going to look like we're making the problem harder, but we're actually making it easier. We're making it harder to make it easier, ultimately. 
So here's what I mean by rotate. Rather than using our normal x, y that looks like this, we're going to rotate our axis so that our x, y looks like this. This is our x axis. This is our y axis here. And we're rotating it so that the x-axis is in the direction of the motion. So this would be parallel to the plane. But more specifically, it's going to be the, essentially, it represents the direction of motion. And if you remember, like all the problems we've been doing the last several days, the direction of motion has always been the x-axis. When we're moving something horizontal, that's the direction of motion. So we're just going to kind of make that the same for these. And the y-axis is, well, perpendicular to the plane. So, so that's a good question. So notice by doing this, even though it looks like we're making it harder, rotating it's not that difficult. And what we've now solved is the friction and the normal force are now in our newly defined x and y. So if normal would be y, friction would be x. However, what did we just do to gravity? We screwed up gravity. So gravity is now in both directions, right? It's in both. And so rather than having to fix two, however, we only have to fix one. And so we do have to fix our gravitational, uh, uh, our gravitational force, um, but we don't have to fix two, we just have to fix one. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. That would be the kind of the next step. So I'll call step C, we're gonna quote fix gravity. And what I mean by that is we're gonna go ahead and find those x, y components. We're gonna change gravity into pure x's and pure y's. So visually what that looks like is we're going to have a component of gravity going this way and we're going to have a component of gravity going this way. So here's our triangle that we're constructing. So this we're going to call F, G, Y and this one we're going to call F, G, X. Okay, so essentially what this is saying is gravity is doing two things. One of the things it's doing is our FGX. Well, go, let's go back to the visual up here. If I let, if I let this mass go, it starts sliding down the ramp, right? Well, which component of gravity is responsible for sliding it down the ramp? FGX. So this is the component of gravity that's sliding the object down the ramp. What is FGY doing? Keeping it on the ramp. Good. So FGY is pointed into the ramp. That's the part of gravity that's keeping it on the ramp, right? Keeping it from sliding off. In fact, if I were to move this at 90 degrees, what happens? Okay, it's just straight gravity and all of gravity is pulling it down the ramp and notice she doesn't stick against the, the ramp, right? She just falls off the ramp. So if you're right here, then part of gravity holds it on the ramp, part of gravity slides it down the ramp. All right, so if I draw just a pure f a pure um, xy free body, let's see, where can I do that? Maybe right here. Notice that I have F, G, Y, F, G, X, normal, and friction. So we have our normal here, we have our friction, those were the same. 
And then these are the components, the two components of gravity that we've fixed, or we're about we're gonna fix that we're about to fix them. So the next thing we do have to do is solve this triangle here. Okay, and so a big thing is to say, all right, you are given the angle of the ramp, how much it was inclined at. You do have to figure out where does that angle belong. Okay, where does that angle belong? And this picture is kind of getting big so let me show you how we will derive that angle here's our angle theta okay so remember gravity came straight down like this this would be kind of our FG here and then we had that normal force kind of coming this way and then we kind of crossed it over here So let's just derive this. So notice this is a right triangle here, right? If this angle was 30, what would this angle be right here? 60, right? And if this angle is 60, what would this angle be right here? 30. So hopefully you can see that this angle theta right here, 30, is the same as this angle 30 right here. And if we go back to our drawing, what that means is, is this angle right here is the same as this angle right here, theta. Uh, now, if you didn't follow that geometry, that's okay. You don't have to derive the geometry every time you do this. Just remember that this angle and this angle will always be the same, these two. Okay, good. Um, all right, so that brings us back to our triangle, and my paper is a little cluttered, so let me just blow this up here. So this is our gravity, Fg. Here's our triangle that we just drew, right? This was our Fgy. This is our Fgx. This is our angle theta. So hopefully once you see this, you can see, okay, it's not too hard to find these, the components. This is the adjacent component. How would we find the adjacent component? Uh, we, we use our cosine. So we could write this as F, G, cosine, theta. Remember, F, G is just M, G. So if you wanted to skip a step, you could call this mg cosine theta. And then this guy right here, this is the opposite side of our triangle. What's this going to be? Okay, fg sine theta. Or mg sine theta. Okay, good, good. So essentially what we've done now is we fixed our gravity. We could write FGX as MG sine theta and FGY is MG cosine theta. I'm doing this with just variables, but you're right. If I gave you angles and so forth, you could start substituting in numbers at any point. But yeah, I want to, I'm going to, over the next several days, I'm going to try to do things with just variables just to get you used to get the habit of doing it with variables. So let's do our x equation here. What do we have on our x? Well, at this point, it should be easy. This is the hardest part, and it is hard the first few times you do it to get to this point. But once you've gotten to this, then it's straightforward. It's everything we've been doing. So for example, in the x direction, we would write this as mg sine theta minus force of friction equals max.
On the y side, we would write f normal minus mg cosine equals may. So there's our equation. So if you want a step by step, next we're going to sum up our equations. And then at this point, you would just start solving depending on what they're asking for. Now I asked you to derive the equation for acceleration, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, do we know anything about either of these accelerations? Okay, so watch it. Watch her again. So she's accelerating. Do we know her acceleration in the x direction? No. Do we know her acceleration in the y direction? No. Yes. What's her acceleration in the y direction? Zero. Zero. Okay. So visually, remember we rotated our axis. So our y direction is perpendicular to the plane. So for her to have a <coughs> vertical acceleration, that would mean that she's off the surface. Okay. So she would have to jump up like this. That would give her a vertical A. Or through the ramp. That would give her a vertical A. But she's only going in our horizontal X. That's another reason why we rotate our axis. So we get that nice vertical A is equal to zero like before. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and solve for AX here. Um, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and solve for the normal force. So is the normal force going to be equal to gravity like always or like many times? Nope, it's not. So our normal force is equal to mg cosine of theta. Does that mean is it greater or less than gravity? Less. Does that make sense conceptually? If you're just on a flat surface, what's true about gravity and the normal force? They're equal, right? If it's on a flat surface, they're equal. So if I made my ramp flat like this, then it would be equal. Well, as I increase the angle, what's happening to the normal force? It's getting less and less and less. More force is pulling her down the ramp, less force is holding her on the ramp. And in fact, if I went straight up, zero force is holding her on the ramp. So as the angle increases, the normal force will decrease. Less force will hold her on the ramp, and more force will pull her down the ramp. And you can see that mathematically also. As the angle goes up, the cosine, is gonna, cosine of the angle is going to decrease. The normal force is going to get smaller. Let's keep going with this one. Mg sine, what's the equation for friction? Okay, now I would ask you to keep going because we do know the normal force, or at least the equation for the normal force. Okay, are we done? Can we simplify this further? Yeah, the masses will cancel. So notice if you divide each side by m, that'll cancel out our masses. So we're almost done. So a is going to be g sine theta minus mu g cosine theta. OK, am I going to give you this equation on a test? No. Okay, should you memorize this? No. So I don't want you to mem. We're going to come up with about 20 equations that look very similar to this. Don't try to memorize them all, okay? Learn how to solve it. And our goal is by next week, you know how to set these up and solve them for random situations. Okay, so let's try one more. 